Every cook in a professional kitchen has their own workstation. What exactly does that mean though? It means that you are in charge of a particular set of dishes or section of the menu that will be produced at one of these workstations whenever an order for that item arrives in the kitchen. Back in lesson one, culinary arts history, we talked briefly about Auguste Scoffier and how he pioneered the brigade system of kitchen organization. Well, here is where we explore that a little deeper. This system might not fit exactly into every operation, but it does provide a good guideline that any operation can adopt or adapt to its needs. Hello again, and welcome to Hospitable You and the Introduction to Culinary Arts video series, lesson number seven, workstations. My name is Chef Jack, and I'll be your host for this series. <laughs> The basic French brigade system that Auguste Scoffier laid down has extensively detailed descriptions for each possible position in a kitchen, and no operation I've ever worked in takes advantage of all of them at once. For the extended list, see the Wikipedia link in the description, but for now I'm just going to go over the most common ones you will find in a modern culinary operation. Of course, at the top you have the executive chef, chef de cuisine, or sometimes simply referred to as the chef. They control the menu and its development, menu production, delegating administrative duties, managing payroll and food costs, and being the public face of the kitchen, among many other duties. They wear a lot of hats, but they should be strong and knowledgeable culinarians above all else. Below them are the sous chefs. They are the eyes and ears of the chef when they are not around, and keep the kitchen on track if the chef is away. They supervise the rest of the kitchen team, organize prep lists and ensure their proper execution, place orders, assist the chef with new menu items and specials, organize recipes and daily kitchen documentation, and make sure the whole team is staying productive and pulling in the same direction. There are generally, but not always, more than one. The rest of the most common positions you'll find in a modern kitchen are a saute chef or saucier. These chefs are in charge of sauteed items and their sauces. In a French format, they're typically regarded as the highest position in the kitchen right under the sous chefs. And then there's the fish chef or poissonnier. They are in charge of fish dishes and their sauces and often fish butchery. This position may sometimes be combined with the saucier. And then there's a roast chef, a rotissier. They are in charge of roasted and braised meats and their sauces. There's also a grill chef, or grillardet. They're in charge of grilled foods, obviously, and sometimes this position may be combined with the rotissier. And then there's the fry chef called a friturier. This position is obviously in charge of fried items, and sometimes may be combined with the rotissier as well. The soup chef is the potager. This chef is obviously in charge of soups. And then there's a roundsman, or tournant. This chef fills in on all the other stations when other chefs are away or out for the day. It's also known as a swing cook, so they need to be familiar with the entire kitchen operation. The pantry chef is also known as the garmagier. They are in charge of cold foods, salads, cold appetizers, pâtés, and other charcuterie items. Which brings us to the butcher, or boucher. This is the chef that butchers meats, poultry, and sometimes fish. The pastry chef, or pâtissier, is in charge of baked goods, pastries, cakes, breads, and desserts and they may be the supervisor of their own team that has their own kitchen. This is, of course, based almost entirely on the needs of a French kitchen. Other cultural cuisines may have different needs depending on the food being produced. An Indian kitchen might need a tandoor station, an Italian restaurant might need a dedicated pasta or pizza station, and a Japanese format might have a robata or sushi station. The output varies, but the format, the skeleton of the system, has spread to just about every type of culinary operation in every country. I haven't been able to find any direct information of this, but I have a suspicion that Chinese kitchens figured this out long before the French. With an unbroken culinary tradition reaching back over 3,000 years, China was almost always the first. There is one modern workstation that does not appear on this list, but it is vital to the operation of a busy kitchen, and that is the expediter or expo station. This is the person driving the ship. This position coordinates all of the stations on the line and has them executing tickets and courses in order of requirement. They communicate with the FOH staff, or front of house, and are the conduit between FOH and BOH, and everything must go through them. Everything. They organize each table's orders and inform the cooks when to fire or begin cooking a table's orders. In European and most American sit-down restaurants, there is a course system in place. Appetizers, then soups, then salad, then main course, then dessert, or something close to this. The expo keeps the kitchen organized and facilitates separate stations working together in order to get all of the food for a specific course finished as close to the same time as possible so the table gets all of their food at the same time at the proper temperature. 
At the time one course goes out, the expo needs to be thinking about the next course, how long that will take to bring together, and how long to give the table to eat the course that was just sent. Some foods take longer to cook than others, after all. So a well-done steak might need to be fired before the appetizers go out in order to be ready when the rest of the entrees for that table are in the window or pass. For this reason, the expo needs to not only be constantly thinking ahead, but they need to be familiar with most or all of the stations on the line and the whole menu in order to properly coordinate this dancing puzzle. The expo is often going to be a senior lead cook, sous chef, or the head chef on a busy night. FOH managers and supervisors are often seen in this position as well. And in the best run kitchens, if the expo has to step away for any reason, the next qualified person will instinctively know to stand there and fill in until the shift's appointed expo can get back to the line. The expo station steers the ship. So without an expo on a busy night, total chaos can quickly ensue. Every station needs to be set up for success from the beginning of the shift. And sanitation is the first place to start. Grab your sani water and soap buckets first thing and put them somewhere accessible but out of the way. Make sure there are rags in each one so you don't have to go searching for one every time you need to clean something. The chef will notice this basic but important step. And if you really want to impress the chef, grab enough soap and sani buckets for every station on the line as soon as you get there and distribute them. Teamwork makes the dream work. The next most basic thing every kitchen workstation will need is a cutting board. We will get into a heated debate over wood versus plastic cutting boards in a later debate show format here on Hospitable U. Most operations use heavy plastic, if for no other reason than they are fairly low maintenance. Sometimes the chef will decide to use a color-coded system in order to keep sanitation as well maintained as possible. With red cutting boards used only for meats, yellow for poultry only, blue for fish, green for veggies, white for cooked foods, etc. This is a good system, but requires constant vigilance and reinforcement to make sure everyone is following these rules at all times. And ultimately, as long as the cutting boards are changed when they need to be cleaned and sanitized properly, it might be more trouble than it's really worth. If you find yourself managing a kitchen full of green or low skill cooks, this might be your best option though. During a typical service, your station will experience lull or downtime at some point. The dining room filled up all at once and you are on a course dependent station like appetizers and you just got done with that push so your next wave is a ways off until there is another table turn. Do not lean on your cutting board and gossip with your neighbor at this point. Use this time wisely. Clean, organize, restock your mise en place, restock your backups, make sure you're ready for the next push. This is a vitally important practice, and if you build this into your work habits and daily routine, the chef will notice it. There are few things more aggravating to a chef than a line cook that just had a break in the action to go down in flames in the next wave because they were not prepared. There's an old adage in the culinary world that you will hear ad nauseum eventually that says, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. There's a reason that chefs have to say this so often people get sick of hearing it. Don't be a part of that reason. The single most important component of a cook's workstation is mise en place. This is a French term that literally translated means putting in place or everything in its place. In a kitchen setting, this is used to refer to all of the prepped items a cook or chef has laid out on their station for service, ideally arranged for efficiency and speed. Items grouped by what dish they go in, then arranged so the items that go in the most popular dish on that station are closest and easiest to access. Every cook has their own way of arranging their mise. And next to picking up someone's knife without asking, touching, or, heaven forbid, rearranging another cook's mise is the biggest sin one can commit in a serious professional kitchen. Once you get used to where everything is located, it becomes an effortless dance to assemble dishes as they come in. A rhythm you start to be able to execute with your eyes closed. If a single thing gets moved, it could throw off your groove, order, or even the entire service. In the revered tome, Kitchen Confidential, Anthony Bourdain wrote the following, that I believe sums up this subject perfectly. Mise en place is the religion of all good cooks. Do not f with a line cook's mise, meaning their setup. Their carefully arranged supplies of sea salt, rough cracked pepper, softened butter, cooking oil, wine, backups, and so on. As a cook, your station and its condition, its state of readiness, is an extension of your nervous system. And it is profoundly upsetting if another cook, or God forbid, a waiter, disrupts your precisely and carefully laid out system. The universe is in order when your station is set up the way you like it. You know where to find everything with your eyes closed. Everything you need during the course of the shift is at the ready at arm's reach. Your defenses are deployed. If you let your mise en place run down, get dirty and disorganized, you'll quickly find yourself spinning in place and calling for backup. He then goes on to talk about working clean. So I will too. 
This is an extremely important skill that can make or break a cook in the middle of a rush. Your station is a direct reflection of what is going on in your head. Messy station equals a messy mind. A messy mind equals spinning in place during service and falling behind. If you have to fight your way through the remains and scraps of the last dish you made to complete the current one in front of you, it will slow you down, and by extension, the whole team in the kitchen will be dragged down with you. Few things make a chef more anxious than seeing a cook with a messy station. Experienced chefs know that this will most likely end a disaster. Build cleanliness into your routine. Wipe down the cutting board as soon as you lift items off of it. Move pans toward ladles and scoops, not ladles and scoops toward pans. Set yourself up with economy of motion in mind. The fewest steps possible, the least distance needed to be traveled, the fewest trips off the line as possible. Always be looking for ways to get better at this as well. Always be looking for ways to make things move quicker, smoother, more efficiently. Working clean is a great first focus to learn the ropes of professional cooking. It will set you up for success for your entire career. The subject of working clean brings us to this lesson's focus on food safety. You'll need to be able to handle raw foods and ready to eat foods all at the same station, so setting yourself up for basic sanitation execution and building these directly into your workflow will be key to ensuring your guests and staff are safe from foodborne illness. The first step is to make sure you get all of your raw protein handling done before service starts and have your station cleaned, sanitized, and ready for service before the orders start coming in. This means cutting fish, poultry, or meats, getting them portioned and ready to be cooked, labeled, dated, and stored on your station in the proper place. All prep to get through the day should be completed before service if at all possible. If you can't get that completed, ask for help. This is a really, really important point. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Ever. We all need to push once in a while, and as long as it doesn't become a habit, the chef will be more than happy to help you or delegate someone to knock something off your list. Expect questions to be sure, like, why do you need help? Or, why can't you be ready for service on time? But as long as you have good reasons that don't involve blaming other team members, the chef should be more than willing to make sure you're ready for service. After all, if one member of the team fails, the whole team fails. In the course of a typical service, you might need to handle raw meats in order to season and cook them. In these cases, have a seasoning station set up for yourself that has different utensils and plates for each type of protein on your station. Chicken should always have its own dedicated spot, separate from fish, which is separate from meats. Each type of protein should have dedicated utensils to prevent cross-contamination as well. Do not use the chicken tongs to handle steaks, and do not use the fish and shellfish tongs to handle anything else either. Those are potential allergens and could create unneeded risks in that regard. This will all greatly minimize the amount of time you spend changing your gloves and washing your hands. Do not forget to change those utensils periodically throughout the night either. Have backup utensils on your station for this reason and send the dirty tongs and spoons to dish as needed. Certain foods, once cooked, need to be rested before being cut or plated for service. Foods like steaks, chops, and roasts. Make sure you have a separate resting station as well if these types of foods are part of that station's duties. We will be getting into why it's important to understand thermodynamics for proper resting in a future lesson. In this lesson, we went over some of the basics of kitchen structure and the brigade system. We talked about the importance of keeping an efficiently organized station to improve workflow and speed up execution, as well as how building good habits like maintaining a clean and tidy workstation help you improve execution time. We also explored how to organize for the best sanitation practices and how important it is to build all of these ideas and practices into your daily routines. Next time we will explore the world of the unsung heroes of the hospitality industry, the backbone that every operation relies on for success, more than they really know in a lot of cases. I'm talking about the underappreciated and often completely overlooked position of the dishwasher. So we'll see you next time. Hospitable You is produced by Hospitable Productions LLC and all of the people listed here. If you want to help keep Hospitable You free for everyone, please consider donating to our PayPal or become a Patreon Patreon. Thank you for watching, and thank you for helping us create a more hospitable you.